presents Gangbusters. Calling the police, calling the G-men, calling all Americans to war on the underworld. Gangbusters, with the cooperation of law enforcement officers of the United States, presents a picture of the endless war of the police on the underworld. Illustrating the clever operation of law enforcement officers in the work of protecting our citizens. The all-American crusade against crime. Jim, they just shot McLeod. Car 39 calling headquarters. Car 39 calling headquarters. Are calling. Send riot squad to 4th and Center. Department store hold up. That is all. Jim, I'll hold him off. I tell you, as mayor of the city, I'm getting panicky. I get a hundred messages a day from people to many that... How can you sit there so calm and unconcerned in the face of the reign of terror around us? Can't you do something about it? You think I'd accomplish more by waving my arms and yelling the way you're doing? I suppose not. But I'll say this, that I'm getting pretty tired of your continual excuses for failure. I expected results from this department, and I'm not getting them. You're not suggesting by any chance that my resignation might be in order, are you? You know better than that, Martin. But I do wish you'd pull Bannister off the investigation. Why? It, well, it doesn't look good. His having a brother that was convicted of a gang murder. We've submitted proof that the boy was framed. The governor's turning him loose. He'll be back tomorrow. I know, but it still looks bad. People are talking. Let them talk. Bill Bannister is better qualified than any man we've got. Yeah? Bannister is here to see you. Send him in. Morning, Mayor Hanson. Morning. Send for me, Chief? Mayor Hansen's not satisfied with our progress against the crime wave. Neither are we. Then why don't you do something about it? Because we're up against the gang we can't even figure out. You see, there's no relation between the crimes they commit. First they rob a bank, obviously, for the loot. Then they blow up an office building or kill some poor harmless citizen without even taking his watch. They act like madmen. That's simple. Probably the work of two or three different gangs. Well, that's the conclusion we've reached. But since then we find that... Yeah? Miss Logan and Mr. Haskins of the Journal to see you, sir. Tell them to go away. They bother me. What is it? This is Vicki Logan speaking. I'm busy. Besides, I don't like reporters. Oh, you like us because we have a hot lead on your crime wave. Well, what are you keeping it out there for? Why don't you bring it in here? Ah, oh, men at work. Morning, all. Morning, Mr. Bill. What do you hear from the mob? That's supposed to be funny. What about that clue? Was that a stall to get in here? No, I think we've got something. It was left at the ad desk. What is it? Copy for a want ad and a $20 bill to pay for running it in the afternoon editions. 
The boss didn't want to run it without your okay. We may want to check fingerprints. Attention all citizens. If you want to know the truth about the crime wave in this city, tune in your short wave sets to the police wavelength tonight at nine. Well, what does it mean? Could be some practical joker with an amateur sending set. As a rule, practical jokers don't toss $20 bills around like that. Sounds like some harmless crank to me, but we'll check it for prints just the same. I'm afraid it's been handled too much, but we'll try the other side. Ah, now we've got something. You didn't really expect me to leave my fingerprints on this, did you? Signed, Professor Mortis. That's not the work of a clank. That's too dumb. Professor Mortis? Any of you ever hear him? Probably an assumed name. Mortis. That's Latin for death, isn't it? Professor Death? That's a thought. Tell your editor to run the ad. What's the idea of running the ad? Be at my office at 9 tonight. We'll show you. <laughs> What's this all about? Each marker represents a police car in various parts of the city. Each car determines the direction of the radio beam from its post and phones it into us. We trace out the lines on our map to where they meet, and that's the location of the sending station. Now, hit it up a couple of feet. Right. That's good. When the broadcast starts, I'll swing the car around slowly. You stop me at the point where you can hear it the clearest. Well, it's after nine and nothing's happened. You can waste your evenings here if you want to, but I'm going out. Fellow citizens, you are listening to the voice of death. A pleasant thought, is it not? I believe you are alarmed at the spread of a reign of terror in your city. I am the cause of that. I am the League of Murdered Men. Dead men. Returned from our graves to take revenge on those who sent us there. You can stop us. Oh, yes. But only by getting rid of the authors of our wrongs. Your present city government. The mayor, judges, police department. Everyone. Until they are thrown from office, no man's life will be safe in this city. Good night. Pleasant dreams. See that, Thomas? South, 14 degrees west. R-27? Right. I got you. Course south, 14 degrees west. Know what I'm talking? For this car, the course of the beam is north, four degrees east. Right. Car 64, two degrees south of east. No one talking. Car 39, north, four degrees east. Right. 400 block Front Street. Officer, that's where that message came from. Scatter a squad around that block and search every room and basement in it. Tim and I will go on ahead. Well, what are you waiting for? An invitation? Next block, Jim. Better slow down. How about turn down this side street? Good idea. Is that a prowl car ahead? Yeah, with the lights turned out. Pull up, Jim. We'll have a look. What are you doing here, Martin? Hey, wake up! Is he dead? Oh, but he seems to be pretty badly hurt. 
Frank was knocked out, too. This note was pinned to his coat. Thanks for the use of your radio, Professor Mortis. Hey, I don't get this. It means he used one of our cars to broadcast his warning. Tim, you better get these men to an emergency hospital as soon as you can. All right. Hey, Bill, I wonder if this is the same gang your brother was mixed up with. No. Well, how do you know he was convicted of a gang killing, wasn't he? It was framed, and I've run down the hoodlums who did it. The governor's turning the kid loose. Gee, I'm glad. When's he coming back? Tomorrow morning, under police escort. He's got some inside dope on this crime wave. Something he picked up when he was in death row. Oh, boy, what a story. Listen, if you print a word of that before I tell you to, I'll have you pinched for obstructing justice. Oh, yeah, but, Bill, we've got to have something to work on. If this on. story gets out before we nab that gang, my brother's life won't be worth a dime. Okay, when we get first crack at it when it breaks. It's a deal. returning to the city tomorrow morning under police escort. What? He has an appointment with his brother at police headquarters. Well, that means he'll tell everything he's found out. That's what the police think also. He should arrive there about 8.30. Yes, just about 8.30. Time is getting here, isn't it? Yes, it's past 8.30. I think this is the car now. Welcome back, Mr. Bannister. How about a statement for the press? Sorry, I can't say a word till I've seen my brother. Oh, come on now. You've got to get some sort of a statement here after all. Yes? Mr. Bannister is here to see Mr. O'Brien. Send him in. Chief. Glad to see you, son. Thanks. I'll leave you two alone to talk things over. Thanks, Chief. Come on, sit down. Tell me all about yourself. It's kind of a dirty trick, but you better take down what he says in there. Yes, sir. I'd better tell you what I found out about this League of Murdered Men. Do you mean even the convicts call the gang by that cheap theatrical name? It may sound theatrical, Bill, but it's on the level. What do you mean, on the level? Practically every man in the mob's dead. I know, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't get you out in time. You must be stir-crazy. I'm giving you the facts, Bill. One of them came to see me. Did you get his name? Yeah, it was Carlson, uh, George Carlson. George Carlson? No, it's probably phony. Yeah, probably. But we'll check on it anyway. What else? He offered to get me out of prison if I joined the mob. Well, how did he expect to spring him? He gave me a little piece of paper with what he called a run-out powder. Run-out powder? Now, don't tell me you fell for a gag like that. Oh, it would have worked all right, but I couldn't go for it. So he gave me a number I could have my lawyer call if I changed my mind. You remember the number? Yeah, he wrote it on the powder paper. It was Waverly 4th. Fourth... The window. Foot, 
swing around the corner. I think that coop in the back is following us. When I pull up alongside, shoot a picture of that mug. Okay, if the mug doesn't take a shot at us first. Yeah, it's trailer, all right. Cops? No, I think it's a press car. Put up that rod. I'll take care of him. I think so. Well, let's go down to the police lab and develop it. Hey, the guy in that car snapped a picture of me. Are you sure? I was looking right at him. And you'll need a real hideout. I better take you right to Professor Mortis. Yeah? Swell. It's about time I met that guy. After all, I'd done for him. I think you're right. I want to look after things for me, will you, Chief? Sure. down to the lab. There's a bare chance they may be able to identify the gun that fired it. Are the markings on the bullet? Sure. I'm going down to emergency. See if the fellow the chief shot can talk yet. Don't worry, Bill. They won't get away with this. Looks like I'm too late. He never regained consciousness. Anybody recognize him? Well, not much chance. He'd had his face changed with plastic surgery. How about the defense? Blair's got him up in the lab, checking him down. Thanks. Any luck? Not yet. No luck so far. Here it is. Who is it? Jake Jordan. Couldn't be Jordan. He's been dead over six months. You must be mistaken. These prints are identical. The fingerprints don't lie. Randall's right. They're identical. All right, they're identical. But Jake Jordan still committed suicide in jail over six months ago. You don't suppose there is something to that league of murder? Uh, how could there be anything to it? Well, how could Jordan be dead six months ago and running around town this morning shooting people? Bad news about your brother coming up. Yeah, sure is tough. No, I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. I know, but we have something here that might help. Three pictures of the getaway, and one of them's a close-up. Then it's your dark room, and we'll prove it. Sure, go right ahead. I might say the same, Mr. Taboni. I thought I made it clear that only members of the League of Murdered Men were to be brought here. It's time Taboni joined. So, 
don't mean he failed in the work assigned him. Me? I never miss. He was photographed getting away, and the police have the photographs. Oh. In that case, of course, you must die. <laughs> Are you kidding? I understood you wanted to join us permanently. Well, should I want to join? But I ain't dying to do it, see? Oh, come now. Dying is not so hard. We've all done it. Mr. Halligan, Mr. Wilkerson, myself. We're suicides, all of us. Su suicides? Yeah. Well, I... I guess it's all right if you like it, but... As for me, I don't want no part of it. So... I'll be seeing you. Wait. I... I forgot to tell you that after you're dead, we bring you back to life. Yeah. Well, listen. I ain't no professor, but I know a few answers, too. And one of them is, when you're dead, you stay dead. Well, it's up to you, Mr. Taboni, whether you die and are brought back to life or whether you just die. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. What's the idea anyhow? To save you from the police. They're bound to get you sooner or later. But if they find you dead, they'll quit looking for you. If I'm dead, what do I care who finds me? All right, take him to the next room if that's how he wants it. Oh, Nick's fellas. Professor. Are you sure you can bring me back, Professor? Well, up to now, I've never failed. Up to now. All right. Yes. If I got it, I just got it. But I know I ain't gonna like it. Keep this until you need it. Take him to his rooms and collect his belongings. Leave no trace of him. Wilkerson, you go to the airport and tell Max to be ready to take a passenger to Newgate. It will be safer for us if the police find you in some other city. Anything you say, but I still say I ain't gonna like it. Take a look at these wet prints. Say anything. I feel bad enough as it is. Forget it. Wait a second. I think I've got something. Whose gun is it? The bony. Now we're getting somewhere. Get his mug for me out of the gallery. The bony, alias Carlson. By the way, I found this in the back of the watch. Mean anything to you? What is it? it must be that runoff father Bud told me about. Waverly 43752, the number he was to call. Hello. Get me the address of Waverly 43752. 841 Largo Street. Thanks. here by the name of Carlson? No. Never been one here by that name as far as I can remember. Did you ever see this man around here? Oh, sure. He's been here three or four months. Which is his room? He just checked out. Not five minutes ago. He's leaving town. Did he say where he was going? No. But the man with him said something about an airport. An airport? Mm -hmm. Did he say which one? Is there one called Max's? There sure is. It's on the Harbor Road. Well, thank you. You're welcome. when he gets here. I'm gonna beat it. Put up your gun. 
not stop him. Just be ready to jump and get in that plane. Get a spare on there while I call headquarters. Car 4-0 calling police headquarters. Car 40 calling police headquarters. And they made a getaway in a black coupe, old but plenty fast. They're heading back to town on the Harbor Highway. I'm on three wheels and can't follow him. Calling cars 45 and 68, cars 4, 5, and 6, 8. Murder car heading east on Harbor Highway. Black coupe, old but fast. Proceed with caution. Occupants armed and dangerous. You better slow down. That cop can't follow us. I put his car out of commission. Yeah, but he can radio police headquarters and have us stopped if we don't get to a side road first. Manister calling police headquarters. Bannister calling police headquarters. Come in, headquarters. He's done it. He's got to bone it. I hope. Bannister calling police headquarters. Come in, headquarters. Headquarters answering Bannister. Come in, please. I've captured Taboni. I'm heading for municipal airport in plane. Pilot dead. Landing gear damaged. We'll need help to land. I didn't know Bill could fly. He can't. Yeah, but he said he was Anybody can keep a plane in the air. Bill couldn't land one with two wheels. What's he going to do with only one? Hop in the car. Circle and come in from the east. And when I tell you to cut your motor, do it. And bear left on your rudder. Bill, let me have that. Don't try to land, Bill. Bail out. I can't. I've got Taboni in only one shoot. He says he can't bail out. He's got Taboni in only one shoot. Well, never mind Taboni. Sorry. Fast, not so fast. Nice, brother. 
Now bear left on your rudder. Harder. Now level off easy. This is the end of the line for you. I never thought you'd make it, Bill. Neither did I. Let me be the first to congratulate you. How about an exclusive story? I'll hold everything. Did his pal get away? No, no, yet. Well, let's find out. Come on. Everything went as I planned it. Yeah, we got to Boney off on the plane for Newgate, all right, but at the air. There's no answer, Mr. Grubb. And thank you. Yes, sir. You said everything worked out as I planned it. This note says otherwise. We hadn't finished reporting when Grubby interrupted. Bannister boarded the plane with Mr. Deboni. He may have arrested him. If so, you have bungled. And no one in my employ ever bungles twice. Even if he does arrest him, we still haven't bungled. How so? You were shipping him to Newgate so that he could be found dead there and join the League of Murdered Men. And if he's arrested, we'll see that he's found dead in jail here and he can still join us. That is what must be done. Mr. Deboni has been arrested. Tonight at 9 o'clock, he must be found dead in his cell. We shall follow our usual procedure. Mr. Bernard, you will act as his nearest relative, as Mr. Halliger did for you when you were found dead in your cell. Mr. Halliger and Mr. Mason will arrange for the removal of the remains. Time you called on Boney. You will be followed when you leave the jail. Lead them to this address. I'll have someone there to verify your story. It says here they kept a guy awake five days and six nights before he went completely goofy. That's a long time, ain't it, Mike? Yeah. Why don't you guys give up? I won't break. I ain't gonna hold my clam, see? What good would it do me to talk? All you guys were doing, turn me loose and, and then what? I wouldn't get around the corner before. The League of Merlin men had been hard on my trail. I couldn't get away from them. They... they... Oh, take him back to the cell. Kind of turns my stomach to see a grown man snivel. Come on, Lug. Listen. This man wants to talk with Tavoni. Says his name is Horton. Who told you Tavoni was here? You an attorney, Mr. Horton? No, I married Mike's sister. I don't like to get mixed up in the mess, but she thought we ought to see if there was something we could do for him. You know how sisters are. I guess it's all right, Sarge. Ed, take this man back to see Deboney. Come on. When he comes out, tell him. Find out anything from him? Oh, uh, just more drivel about the League of Murdered Men. Then arresting Caboni hasn't meant a thing, has it? Not to you, I suppose. But after all, he is the man who murdered my brother. 
Pick up anything on the car they left at the airport, Chief? Only it was a stolen car with phony license plates. There goes our last chance to find out anything. Not quite. I've got great hopes for that old black coupe. There's a million like it in town. Not just like this one. It's a hopped up job that any mechanic would remember if he'd ever worked on it. Have you put a detail on it? Yes, sir. And Tim and I are going out on our own. Not a word of this in the paper till they give you the go signal. What's the idea of giving these reporters the run of your office? Just paying them back for some good turns they've done us. Well, let's be the first to congratulate us. Now, if you'll excuse us, Your Honor. Hello, Mike. Oh, your sister sent me down. My sister? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's set for tonight at 9. Have you got the run-out pilot the professor gave you? Yeah. But I don't know. It takes a lot of nerve to commit suicide. It takes a lot of nerve to go to the hot seat. And that's permanent. Yeah, but why do I have to hang myself? You pretend too stupid. So they won't hold an autopsy. Okay. It's a deal. Tonight at nine. But remember, no slip-ups. All right, let's go. I think I know the car you're after. It belongs somewhere in this neighborhood. How do you know? It comes in here pretty regular for service. What makes you think it's a mob car? Well, there's so many different guys driving it. Thanks. Mind if I use your phone? Sure. Hello, Chief. I think I got a lead on that black coupe. Call my detail out of the sticks and have them start at 5th and Main and cover every garage within 10 blocks. All right. Okay. Hey, Cap. What time is it? What do you care? You're not going anywhere. On this stale coffee. Come on, what time is it? 9 o'clock. You've been in here often enough to know what time they douse the lights. Oh, Sergeant, is it too late for me to see Tavoni again? It is. Would you do me a favor? What is it? Get him to sign this power of attorney so my wife can draw on his bank account to hire a lawyer for him. If it was me, I'd let him hang, but she's his sister. Hey, Ed, see if Taboni wants to sign this. Yes, sir. No, sir, no luck yet. I got a hunch we're getting pretty hot. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Yeah. Dead? Desk calling. Send a doctor down to block four. The boning just hung himself. You mean that Mike is with his own necktie? Well, I don't suppose I should say this, but to tell you the truth, it's a relief. Well, it might not be such a relief. Your name is Horton? Yes, why? He left a note saying you're to take care of the remains. Well, if I have to, I have to. Can I borrow your phone book? Sure. I wonder if you'd call the undertaker for me. I don't know much about such things. Uh, it's Colfax 4379. Colfax 4379. Cloverdale Mortuary. Central Police Headquarters. Yes, we'll send the car right over. What's the name again? Michael Taboni. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Come on, minutes count now. Hey, listen, don't let anything happen to this heap. It'll cost me my job. Don't worry. Somehow it grows more and more painful coming back to this old place. 
It used to be my home. But I think what they've done to me, strip me of honor and self-respect, driven me a hind-legged animal. They've arrived. Is there anything else to prepare? No. No, thank you, Wilkinson. Everything is in readiness. Right here, please. Did you have any trouble? Not a bit. He's hardly cold. Good, good. This is Grubb. I just found out that Bannister's case and garages for the black coupe. Yeah? Yeah, they're getting hot. All right, thanks. Slight pulse. Grubby says the coppers are casing the garages for the black coupe. Wilkerson, I, I wish you'd learn to speak more clearly. Who is doing what? The police are searching the garages for the black coupe. Naturally. And where is the coupe? We left it at the target garage. We'll pick it up when we return the dead wagon. No. Borrow a car on the street, any car but one of ours. Drive to the garage and get the coupe before the police find it. Ferguson, you take the dead wagon to some lonely place and wreck it. It's unsafe to return it now. you back to life, as I promised. You are now officially dead, and a true member of the League of Murdered Men. Yeah. Come on, let's have it. You got me all wrong, fella. I, I just work here. I don't know nothing. Honest, I don't. Take him downstairs to the garage, superintendent. Check his record and have him held as a material witness. Okay, you staying here? Just someone calls for this hack. Come on. Hello, Chief. Bannister calling. Just wanted to tell you we located that coup and... What? Tavoni committed suicide? Well, that's one... Let me out of here! Take it easy. It wouldn't be so good to get picked up for speeding in a borrowed car. Yeah, and it won't be so good getting to the garage after the cops have found that coupe either. Hello? Hello, Bill. That mechanic gave me the slip, blocked me in the former's office. Sounds like he left on a motorcycle. Get after him. Right. Pick up a car. I'll 
stand them off. have to show up just in time to gum everything up. I'm sorry. You said that before. Car number 10 calling headquarters. Bannister calling headquarters. Come in, please. Headquarters answering car 10. Broadcast to general. Pick up black sedan, license number 36Q355. Two men in it, one wounded. Repeat, license number 36Q355. Calling all cars. Attention all cars, pick up black sedan, license 36Q355, with two men, one wounded, dangerous, part of League of Murdered Men, repeat license 36Q355. Oh, oh, sorry. Hello, Mason. What happened to you? Just an accident. Nothing serious. Uh, don't kid me. I've seen them bullet holes before. So you think it's a bullet hole, do you? Well, I, I did think so, but I see now I was mistaken. All right, don't forget it. You want to earn an easy five bucks? Hey, I'm always glad to pick up an honest pen. Right, drive that crate out of the district and ditch it. Sure. I better keep to the back alleys and dark streets. Hey, I wasn't born yesterday. Why don't you say something, Professor? How am I doing? You seem to be back to normal again, Mr. Taboni. Yeah? I think so. How do you feel? In the pink, Professor, in the pink. Yeah, in the pink. Say, what's all this hocus pocus about? Didn't I really die in jail? As far as our present medical science could determine, you did. Hey, I ain't really dead now, am I? No. How'd you do it, Doc? I doubt if you'd understand the process, even if I explained it. <laughs> I guess you're right, but it's still a good trick if you can do it. Say, where are we? This ain't that set up under the subway, is it? No. This is my old home, where I lived before the law made me an outcast. First of the League of Murdered Men. Hey, Doc, who brought you back to life? A very intelligent question, Mr. Taborny. But one that is best left unanswered for the time being. Get your things, please. I think it'll be safer returning to headquarters while it's still dark. Hello, Barney. Hello, Rogan. How long have you been a car owner? Oh, you mean this? No, it ain't mine. I, I, I just went in to, to see if it had a cigarette lighter. You got a match? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, that's swell. Thanks. Gardner calling. Have Jerry Rogan picked up. I just called him fooling around a car that had blood stains on the cushions. I didn't find it till after he had gone. It does fit the description of that getaway car. Right. Calling car 54. Attention, car 54. Go to 312 Bakeman. Two ladies arguing with rolling pins. That is all. Do you two have to come to the chief's office to listen to police broadcasts? I'm sorry. played up last night's business? Don't make me laugh. I see your department has scored another outstanding failure. Oh, 
I wouldn't go so far as to say that. You wouldn't. Gangsters again elude police. I tell you, this has got to stop. There's talk of recalling the entire administration. I know, I know. You said all that before. And I say it again. Where's Bannister? Getting some sleep, I suppose. He's been on this case all night. Sleep? How can he sleep after the way he... So, you decided to get back on the job again, did you? Yes, sir. Seemed like a good idea to me. Any news, Chief? Have they picked up Rogan? No, but he's been phoning you every five minutes at... Hello. Rogan. Well, Rogan, what's on your mind? Yeah, they're looking for him. Now, listen, Bannister, I don't know anything about that job last night. On the level, I... Sure, I was the guy that drove the car. Yeah, a couple of guys give me a fin to ditch it for him, that's all. You know their names or where we can find them? Well, I, I know Mason, the guy that was shot. They hold out in a flop house on, uh, on Esther Street, 712. Now, listen, call up them bulls, will you? Okay, Rogan, thanks. Hello, give me in radio division. Hello? Call off the pickup on Rogan. He's just told us what we want to know. No wonder we don't get anywhere. Letting known crooks go get free when... Get car 39 and tell Tim Nolan to meet me at 712 Esther Street. It's urgent. Hey, what's this all about? Sorry, sir, but the mayor wants me to keep on the job. The mayor? Who's he? Who? 39, attention, car 39. Nolan, meet Bannister at 712 Esther Street. 712 Esther Street. Urgent. That is all. That's all I need. Come on, let me pie. And so I formed the League of Murdered Men from dead men. Who would still be dead if I hadn't brought them back to life. <laughs> if you hadn't done it to me, I wouldn't believe it. But hey, what's the idea of this mob of ex-dead men? I wanted men who have to do what I order, whether they like it or not. That's not for me, Doc. I'm much obliged to you for bringing me back to life, of course, but if I don't like a setup, I just walk out on it. You won't walk out on this one. What's going to stop me? These. I brought you back to life. But you have to take one of these every few days if you want to stay alive. You mean I got to keep taking those or I'll die? I'm going to rub you out. That wouldn't help you, Taboni. Because I'm the only man alive who knows this formula. Pretty late for you to report, isn't it, Holligan? I had to stay with Mason. He was wounded getting away last night. Seriously? Just a flesh wound, but it needed attention. Where is he? Esther Street. Did anyone recognize you? No. The paper says the police are looking for a man named Rogan. They claim he knows something. Well, I had to have someone ditch the car. Rogan won't talk. Talk. He's already talked. The police are on the way for Mason. Get to a phone and warn him. to know where I hide out. Sister, get out of here! Bill! Beat it, will you? Bill! Bill! Oh, Jesus, no! 
there with him. Vicky, where's your car? Back here. to take charge. I'll call her wagon. Come on, Kim. You see, the man is hurt. I was going to put you out, but after what's happened, I'm heading for the state line, and I might need you to keep the coppers from shooting. You think that'll stop them? Shut up. Turn on the radio. Let's hear what they're saying about me. Car 39 calling in. Car 39 calling headquarters. Come in, please. Headquarters answering 3-9. Send wagon to 4th and Market. Hit and run. Victim is dead. Driver escaped, but identity is known. Will probably head for the state line. Order Tri-County Blockade. Driver's name Mason is wanted for murder. Escaped in police car number 10. That is all. Say, hey, what's this Tri-County Blockade business, sister? You really want to know? All motorized police units in counties bordering the city are directed from headquarters to key positions on all roads leading out of town. With your description, you haven't got a chance, brother. <laughs> That's what you think. Calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Report stations at once for Tri-County Blockade. Calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Report stations at once for Tri-County Blockade. Car 2 intersection of Grand and Oak. Motorcycle 63, motorcycle 63. Intersection highways 40 and 71, car 20, car 20, intersection of Grand and Oak, car 69, Grand and Valley, report back, car 47, Bluff and Kings Road, report back, motorcycle 17, patrol Hill Road above Marlowe Country Club, car 26, Jones Terrace, report back. Reports murder car heading west on Highway 40, beyond Fairview. What do you think of the blockade now? If he gets on those dirt roads, he can make it to the state line. We can't possibly blockade them all. He'd be picked up eventually, of course. But in the meantime, what about Vicky? Well, he'd have a better chance of hiding out if he ditched her and beat her back to town. Yeah, of course. He could return by Garvey Overdrive or Burns Avenue. If we could only trick him into thinking these highways weren't covered. Yeah, but he's probably got his radio on and knows everything we're doing. Yeah. Say, that gives me an idea. Lopez in car 52 and Murphy on motorcycle 16 both speak a little Spanish. Worth trying. Let me have that mic. Atención automóvil número 52 y motocicleta 16, motocicleta 16. Lopez y Murphy, escuchen me. No hagan caso de la orden que les voy a dar en inglés, ¿me entienden? Calling all cars on Garvey Overdrive and Burns Avenue. Change your stations. Work farther north. There's no chance that the murder car will attempt to return to the city. That is all. <laughs> Coppers are born chumps. Did they think I wouldn't have the radio on? Now we'll go back to town. Makes sense to me. If you take Murphy and Lopez off their stations, what's to prevent Mason from getting back into town? Stop worrying. They won't leave their stations. I just told them in Spanish to pay no attention to the order I gave them in English. What well, another chance, eh? <laughs> Here, take the wheel. My arm's killing me. What am I supposed to do, burst into tears? I said take the wheel. Mm -hmm. 
Bannister calling police headquarters. Bannister calling police headquarters. Come in, please. Headquarters answering Bannister. Any report on Vicki Logan or that getaway car? Still say you haven't got a chance. Come on, step on it. Give it the gun. Do you see what I see ahead? Get on that running board so they won't start shooting. Get out there, I say. just the female of the species. Mostly the girl variety, I guess. All right, officer, break up this paddy camp. Bannister calling police headquarters. Bannister calling police headquarters. Come in, please. Police headquarters answering Bannister. Come in, please. Mason's car is wrecked at Garvey Bridge. Mason is dead. Vicki Logan say thanks to Tim Nolan. Relay at once to Chief O'Brien. If you are a reporter, you can't get in there. The chief's busy. And I don't care if he is busy. I got to find out about Vicky. What's happened to Vicky Logan? Don't the police ever know anything about what's going on? Quiet. He's getting a report now. Dead? Are you sure? That's bad. Thanks. Did he say she's dead? Couldn't he be mistaken? Vicky's all right, but Mason's dead. His car went over the Garva Bridge and burned. Boy, what a story. Journal camera girl escapes from murder car. What a scoop! Oh, I hope she's got some pictures. Did they get anything on Mason? Any fingerprints, clues, something to lead us up to the League of Murdered Men? How could they? The car burned to ashes with him in it. Then we're right back where we started. Doesn't this department ever get anything done? You take Vicky back to town in your car and drop her at the office. What are you going to do? I'm going to that Esther Street house. If Mason left any clues, we want to get them on the hot. OK, I'll drop Vicky and meet you there.
There's no answer, Mr. Crow. No, thank you. Yes, sir. Mason's car was wrecked and he was killed. I know. Did he leave any clues in his rooms that might lead the police to us? I don't see how he could have. There was never much in him to begin with. Much? This man Bannis is no fool. He won't require much. Go to his rooms and make sure there's nothing, nothing that will lead him to us. The cops have probably got the place staked out by now. Staked out? They're on their way there now to search it. You've got to beat them to it and destroy anything he may have left. Well, if the cops find me there... If they find you there, make sure they never return to headquarters. Take Wilkinson with you. Bannister. Hey, Nick's no gunplay. It's too noisy. Stay over by the fireplace. Don't let him see your face. Hold it right where you are. What are you trying to do? Destroy a little evidence? Police headquarters. Hello. Hello, this is Tim Nolan, reporting from 712 Vester Street. Two members of the League of Murdered Men just left this address. Yeah, one's Wilkinson, the other's unknown. Wilkinson's about 33. 5'10", 160, got a sandy mustache. He's wearing a blue suit and a brown snap rim hat. The other guy is wearing a gray suit, snappy dress, got a blue Hamburg hat. He's about 35. They both show the effects of a rough and tumble fight. Okay. Hey, how about phoning for a fingerprint man? Give this room a dusting. Oh, Mason's too smart to leave prints on anything but clothing, and the other two gorillas wore gloves. Come on, let's get this out the lab. All this laboratory hocus-pocus seems a waste of time to me. If we spent less time on that and more time in running down crooks, we might get somewhere. The lab plays a bigger part in crime detection than any other one department. Nonsense. What can you get from a pair of shoes? And you admit the numbers have been filed off the gun. You can't remove a number from a gun by filing it off. Why not? Well, when it's stamped in, it affects the metal clear through. It can still be brought out by the use of certain chemicals. I think that's got it, Randall. Here, mark this down. C-4327-9-3. Six R. See it, Mayor? Yeah. What good does that do? You can't hang a serial number. You can check through on it and perhaps establish ownership. So you had a class with the police and let them get away alive. I didn't suspect any of my men could be so stupid. What use are you to me now that they know you by sight? We kept them so busy, I don't think they'd recognize us. Don't be a fool. Bannis is a police officer and a very able one. <laughs> I could use a few men of his caliber in the... That's not a bad idea. I think I shall induct Mr. Bannister into the League of Murdered Men. What? Bring that copper down here where he knows I killed his brother? And when he has died and I have brought him back to life, 
You'll have to obey my orders in order to stay alive. Like the rest of you. I'm not dead, fellas. You got me all wrong. I never stood lead on you. Well, we think you're dead. And we're giving you a chance to square yourself. Sure. You know me, always ready to do a pound of favor. That's more like it. Here, take this paper and keep it. And we'll just ride around town till dark so you won't change your mind. This gun was first sold to a member of the Crocker Gang out on the coast. Well, this mob is not the Crocker Gang. Their specialty was warehouse jobs. Furs, silks, rugs. Here are your fingerprints. Mason's real name must have been, well, for the love of Mike. What is it? Take a look at that. Jody Marsden. He died in a store about a year ago. Another dead one come back to life. Oh, it's getting pretty hard to laugh off that League of Murdered Men gag. Doesn't make sense, but... Yeah? I'm busy. Find out who it is, and I'll call back later. What? Oh, put him on. Jerry Rogan. Mr. still who tipped me off about that. Hello, Jerry. What's on your mind? I got a beef to square with a couple of torpedoes, and I'm doing it my way, see? How'd you like a hot tip on the League of Murdered Men? Now, uh, don't tell me you believe in spooks. Oh, so you think I'm kidding, huh? Mike Taboni died in stir, didn't he? And I'll get this. He's still alive. Well, come up and tell me all about it. No, no, it's too dangerous. You come down here. I'm at Ethan Green. <laughs> took this. It's the first break we've had on this League of Murdered Men case. All right, Wilkinson, you go up in the loft. You know what to do. Sure. Now the rest of us will hide out where we can watch without being seen. Taboni, you'll be the bait. I don't like it. The basic thing is it always gets the hook. When Bannister comes in, you move out where he can see you and... And get shot right in the stomach. Not a chance. He wants to take you alive. What makes you think he's coming here alone? Bannister's no dope, you know. We'll take care of the others, if any. Remember, the professor wants Bannister a prisoner. Okay, but I still don't like it. Here he comes, boys. Bannister calling police headquarters. Bannister calling police headquarters. Come in, please. Police headquarters answering Bannister. Go ahead. I'm at 1313 Queens Road. Don't like the feel of things. Have no one come out just in case. You all set, Wilkinson? All set. Don't shoot, Bannister. 
Don't do it. You're going to the chair, Devoney. You're killing my brother. But before you burn, you're going to tell us a lot of things we want to know. Siren? Duck out the back and get the car started. Don't leave me caught! See, you got one of them anyway. He's back there lying on the floor. I didn't even get him. He stopped the bullet meant for me. Where's the dead pigeon now? Too bad. We might have got something out of him. He did talk some. Kept calling one of the gang for help. Called him by the name of Corky. There's only one guy in this town by that name big enough to run over this mob. I know. You mean Corky Watts. But Corky Watts is still up the river, isn't he? No, he was released on parole a few weeks ago. No good going to his old address. He won't be there after this. We've got to locate him, Tim. He's our hottest tip to the League of Murdered Men. Tell you guys, you don't need to worry. No cop will ever tail me after the ride we took. Okay, Corky, but don't change hideouts without letting us know. Sure, sure. He went on inside, all right. Yeah, he better stay there till we find out what the boss wants to do with him. Chief O'Brien, you've got to give out some sort of a story to the press. There's nothing I can say until I hear from Bannister. Well, make up something. The taxpayers expect it. They thought you'd have this gang busted wide open before now. So did I. My young Blazes hasn't Bannister reported. Does he think... Yeah? Mayor Hanson calling, sir. Put him on. That porpoise. O'Brien speaking. No, I haven't had any report from Bannister yet. It looked like a hot lead, but... He's always on a hot lead, but it freezes solid before he gets anywhere. All I can say, Your Honor, is we're doing everything we can to crack this case. All I can say is you'd better, or there'll be some changes made, Mr. O'Brien! <laughs> yeah? Mr. Bannister is here. Send him in. It's about time you showed up. What's happened? Well, it's a long story, Chief. I walked into a trap. There was a fight, and Batty Sims was killed. Who did it? I don't know, but Corky Watts was one of the gang. Corky Watts. Have him picked up for questioning. We went to his room, but he's pulled out. Maybe the mayor was right. There should be some changes made. I dug these out of the gallery on the way up. Corky Watts. Frenchy LeDuc. What's LeDuc got to do with this? LeDuc? Is that the same fellow they call Frenchy the Duck? Yeah, runs a social club down on the waterfront. Sort of a hangout for the gang. Never mind that. What's he got to do with Corky? Well, they were cellmates in the big house, and Frenchy's seems like a natural place for Corky to hide out. Well, what are you waiting for? Go over to his place with a fine comb. If you don't find Corky, stake it out until you do. Jim's already waiting in the car downstairs. You have come to me to advise you, eh, mon ami? Why? Did you broke your parole? Yes, sure, I broke parole, but... Listen, Frenchy. That ain't what's worrying me. No? What is? The mob I got mixed up with. The League of Murdered Men. 
Oh, do not tell me, my friend, you are afraid of these trick names. They ain't no trick name, Frenchie. They are dead men, every one of them. I know because I... Oh, skip it. What it is you want from your friend, Frenchie? Well, the cops don't bother me, but the mob does. They spotted me in the roost, and they want to rub me out. So I've got to have a place to hide, Frenchie. I just got to. I think it might be arranged for a price. All right. What is it? Social club, how do you like that? Hello, Bruiser. Haven't they caught up with you yet? Go on, beat it. Nobody allowed but members. Skip it, we want to see Frenchie. But does he want to see you? I hope so. Come on, open up. Okay. such a long time, my friend. I wouldn't be here now, Frenchie, if I wasn't looking for a friend of yours. So? Who it is you look for? Corky Watts. Oh, -ho, my good friend Corky Watts. Oh, yes. I didn't see him in such a long time. You haven't? I heard he was living here. But no, monsieur. You do not think that I, Frenchie Ludoc, would hide a criminal from the police. Come, you will search my house. Well, that's all right, Frenchie. I'll take your word for it. If you say he's not here, that's good enough for me. But I am perfectly willing for you to search. If you show us up, give me a ring. May we, Monsieur Bannister. If I can be of any help to you or the police, I will be only too happy. Okay, Frenchie. Yes. You will be safe upstairs in room three until this thing she blow over. Maybe the boys will come back. No. No, do not worry, my friend. There is a back stairway from room three which leads downstairs to the alley. I still think we ought to search the place. Corky might be there. I'm sure he is, Tim. Frenchy hustled someone out of his office just before we went in. What makes you think so? Frenchy was smoking a pipe. There was a cigarette stub on the floor still burning. Well, let's go back. No, Corky's more valuable to us where he is as bait. It's the League of Murdered Men we're after. We'll tip them off we know where Corky is. When they show up for him, we'll be waiting for them. Is that about what you wanted, Bill? Perfect. You didn't tell anyone I asked you to write it in, did you? Not even Haskins. And believe me, that's treason. Speaking of the devil, Okay. Not yet. I left the car at the end of the wharf where it'd be handy. What makes you so sure anyone will show up, Bannister? The police believe Corky Watts has taken refuge with a former cellmate on the waterfront. They expect to arrest him for questioning within a few hours. That's all, Mr. Crop. And thank you. Yes, sir. You should have got rid of Corky Watts when you found out the police had recognized him. You've always told us never to make a move like that without orders from you. Well, you have those orders now. Bernard, you and Wilkinson go to Frenchie's and make sure that Corky Watts is in no condition to talk when the police find him. The police also saw and recognized Mr. Taboni, didn't they? Yeah. So that makes him as useless to us as Corky Watts, doesn't it? Hey, wait a minute. You can't rub me out like you're going to do to Corky. I was only following no, orders. No, Mr. Taboni, nothing as drastic as that. Bring my surgical equipment, please. 
Uh, say, what's this surgical business? Nothing to be alarmed over. A simple operation I perform many times. Yeah, too close. Remove your coat, Mr. Boney, and lie down here. Oh, no. Nothing doing. Not till I know what gives. A simple matter of plastic surgery. I'm going to change your features so the police won't recognize you when they see you. That's not for me. Bullets I don't mind, but knives I can't stand. I'll stay just the way I am. You haven't forgotten, have you, that you can't go on living without those capsules of mine? Remove your coat and get on the table. Come on, Mike, off of the coat. Okay. But I won't like it. I like my pen the way it is. Sheer vanity, Mr. Taboni. Sheer vanity. We may have to stake this place out for a week, Bill. No chance. They'll show up inside of an hour. Hey, wait a minute. There's two of them now. We better work fast. It'll be the finish for Corky. All right, Skipper, take us in. Vita, no one allowed but members in here. We want to see Frenchy. Open up. Okay. Okay. Don't trace you for play. <laughs> You have business with me, monsieur? Yeah. Where's Corky Watts? Oh, yes. You are from the League of Murdered Men, is it not? Corky was expecting you. Where is he? I am so sorry. I cannot have him killed in my place. It would only get me in trouble with the police. You're in a bad spot to refuse, Frenchy. Where is he? You are not in such a good spot yourself, mon ami. That means the police are here. Yeah? Not so fast, my friends. It would not look good for Frenchy if policemen are found killed. Put the guns away. This way. Corky is in room three, upstairs. What happens if the police search the place? There is a back way out. Corky will show you. Come in. One moment. Monsieur Benister, I did not expect you back so soon. How can I serve you? Where are the two men we just trailed in here? Two men? I did not see them. Okay, Frenchy, I guess we'll have to search the place. I suppose you have a search warrant? Sure. This time we outguessed you, Frenchy. We're out in Wilkinson. Let us in. The cops are downstairs. Cop, I ain't heard of sirens. They're downstairs. Open up, stupid. Nothing to it. I know what you're here for. I am sorry you suspect my house, but you may search if you like. Thanks. Keep an eye on him, Tim. Come on, open up. We gotta get out of here, I tell you. Take the stairway to the roof. Try the fire escape. Hold it. Turn around. All right, copper. on that stuff, the boss don't want him killed. Yeah, all right. Bill, Bill!
come into trenches with me. I may need you. I'll go after him, officer. Go into trenches and see what happened to Tim. I got one good print off that uh, glass, Bannister. That's a break. Have a look, Nolan. Hey, Bill. I think we got something here. The slug on the right is the one who was shot at you. It was fired from the same gun that killed Corky Watts. That gives us a definite murder charge against the owner. Now, if we can establish his identity and tail him, we'd be in a spot to bust this game wide open. Hey, Bannister. There's your man. He's really got a record. Ted Lane, he's not the man that shot at me. It's got to be. If the fingerprint you brought in, it's his. Ted Lane committed suicide months ago while I was waiting for the chair. Another one, eh? Huh? Well, it begins to look as if there must be something to this League of Murdered Men business. Doesn't seem possible, but it sure looks like it. Hey, maybe this Professor Mortis has got some way of getting them and bringing them back to life. Oh, ridiculous. I'm not so sure. I've got a picture for you, Bill. A good clear one for a change. It's a blob of one I took when they were going to the Frenchies. Uh, this is a man that killed Corky Watts and took a shot at me. And his real name is Ted Lane. Fingerprints just don't lie. Say, I think I've got it. These lugs have all had their faces altered. No wonder we couldn't recognize any of them. You mean plastic surgery? Let's see. Sure, that could be the same face, retreaded. Give a copy of that to every man on the force. Dragnet? No. When we find him, we're going to trail him night and day until he leads us to the League of Murdered Men and Professor Mortis. You are not to remove those bandages for a couple of days, Mr. Taboni. When you do, you'll find I've changed your face so you won't recognize it yourself. Well, that ain't going to make any hit with me. I like my pen the way it was. Did you really? Well, of course, there's no accounting for taste. Well, what sort of a crack is that, a crack? I almost got Bannister for you today, Chief, alive. I know. I also know Bannister almost got you, dead. That wouldn't disturb me much. But, Mr. Bernard, the police got a very good photograph of you. They expect to use it to locate you. Then trace you to me and stamp out the League. 
It'll take better police than they have in this town to trail me. They're a bunch of saps. If they weren't, they'd quit fighting me and resign, as I advised them to do. I'll prove that to the city tonight with this little device I've contrived. You better come away from there. Those dials are set at 540, 640, and 740. Now, I set this 540. Flip the switch. 640. Snap it. And 740. The remote control? It has a radius of about 15 miles, which is sufficient. I shall explode these in the most important building in the city tonight. Moreover, I shall tell the citizens in advance what I intend to do, and the exact hour, and defy the police to prevent me. How are you going to tip them off, Professor? Attention, citizens. Tune in your shortwave sets at 5 p.m. today to another crime wave broadcast by Professor Mortis. Important. Do you suppose a fool really will attempt another broadcast? Professor Mortis is not a fool, Mayor Hanson. If he says he's going to broadcast, you can bet he'll do it. Well, why aren't you doing something about it? We are. We're going to try to locate his sending set by picking up his beam when he starts to broadcast. You've tried that before and failed. I know, but all we can do is try. We've got cars stationed on turntables to pick up his beam when he goes on the air. Well, I better start fishing for it. It's just five. Here it comes. Swing the car easy to my right. Fellow citizens, this is Professor Mortis speaking, addressing you from the grave to which you sent me. Why have you disregarded my last broadcast? Why have you not put an end to my reign of terror? by throwing out of office all your civic authorities. Mayor Hanson, your judges, especially your stupid, blundering police department. That's funny. I can't find where it's coming from. It keeps changing directions. Your police believe they are closing in on the League of Murdered Men. <laughs> to prove how helpless they are, I issue this challenge. Tonight, at 8 o'clock, I shall destroy the nearly completed city hall. And I defy the police to stop me. Stand by, Tim, for calls when they come in from our cars. City desk. I'll hold the line. Hello? I see, OK. R-14 is some kind of trouble. Interference, probably. Hello, Ed. Happy. I'm calling from the chief's office. Did you hear the broadcast? Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Hello. Car 66. All right, I'll tell him. Car 66 couldn't locate the beam either. Hold on, Ed. Something breaking. Hello. 74. Go ahead. What? What course? Hello, Bannister speaking. What's wrong, Andy? Oh, I see. Thanks. What's wrong? None of our cars have been able to get a line on the radio beam. It's been shifting around in all directions. More place inefficiency. How can a broadcasting beam shift location? Well, it was probably sent from a moving car. Scoop lead on mortar story. Police unable to triangulate for setting station. Broadcast made from a moving car. Now play up the man's genius angle. Genius? Later. The man's insane. Maybe. Better call the contractor and stop construction. And no night shift tonight. What? Make a laugh stock of myself? That man wouldn't dare blow up that building.
I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I'm not going to let you risk the lives of hundreds of workmen just because you're afraid of making a mistake. Hello, Building Superintendent. O'Brien speaking. Did you hear that lunatic's broadcast just now? Better stop work for the day and call off the night shift. Right, right. It's a fine thing when the city government can be shoved it's around by... Your headache, Bill. Take all the men you need. And don't forget you're probably dealing with a madman. Yes, sir. Come on, Tim. Hello, Ed. Well, Chief O'Brien won the come argument. On, come on. All work call off to further orders. Hang up on it. I want to get some pictures of it. Find a quiet side street in the park. Find anything? I'm a thing. The crew must have left on the run. There's nothing up above either. We've been over it with a fine calm. Well, if there's nothing inside, what are we afraid of? That's just it. We don't know what to be afraid of. We're dealing with a madman. Anything can happen. Well, what do we do? The sensible thing to do is to get a safe distance away and watch. Get back to your squad cars. Three minutes. drive around the corner and park. I want to get some pictures of this mess before and after. And now's the time to get them before. Hey, Weed, that's no place to be prowling around tonight. Oh, there's plenty of time. It's only 7.20. Seems later than that to me. Go on and park. A minute or two until eight. Where's Vicky? We're inside getting pictures. Inside? Is she crazy? I rather hope Bannister will be in the building. He's becoming somewhat of a nuisance. Vicky! What'd you let her go in there for? Vicky! Vicky Logan! Where are you? It's nearly eight. Is it? My watch must be slow. Eight o'clock. Come on down, do you hear me? Okay, in a couple of minutes. Now, 5.40. Would you please get out of here? There it goes. Mortis wasn't kidding. That was out front. Good thing it was. Come on. Ever slide down a rope? No, but I can't think of a better place to learn. Now use your feet as brakes and get going. were in there, they didn't have a chance. Perhaps now the police will realize the type of mind they're dealing with. Are you hurt, Vicky? No, I'm all right. Let's rush these pictures through. Come on. I gave you up, Bill. Stop the car. We can see if the other boys have taken care of the bank. Oh, it's a cinch. All the cops in town are right here. That, Mr. Tavoni, was the general idea. Those explosions were planet time bombs, or else they were set off from some other place. There was no one else in the building. The nerve of that guy mortis. He'll try anything. Stop in that alley leading behind the bank. Everything worked out. Only one hitch. And that was... One of the watchmen played ball, the other one had to be handled. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, Wilkinson and Henry, that's the watchman we paid off, have been loading the money in the other car. And when Henry has served his purpose... Right.
all 7th Division cars. Emergency alarm from the United Mortgage Building. Repeat, attention, all 7th Division cars. Emergency alarm from the United Mortgage Building. Well, that's just a few blocks from here, United Mortgage. That's the bank. Let's go. Maybe blowing up the new city hall was a gag. Yeah, to draw our attention so the mob could do a job somewhere else. See, we gotta get out of here. That watchman you thought you took care of just turned in an alarm. We can't risk taking the money to headquarters now. Wilkinson, you and the watchman take it to Francis. We'll transfer it when it's safer. Elliot, you stand by with a car to ward off pursuit. Take the bony with you. He's too conspicuous to suit me. Get out. Wait a minute. What did the professor mean when he said I was conspicuous? Was that a crack? Come on. Take care of things here. We're going after the car that just left. There's another police car coming towards us. It's the one behind us I'm interested in. Under my looks. He ruined him. What looks? Still like the little fish better. I think we lost him. No, we didn't. Hang on. Make up your mind. places in this neighborhood, and all of them good. Right. No use wasting time around here. Let's get back to the bank. What'd you find? One vault open and emptied, one watchman dead, the other missing. You sure there were two watchmen? Yes, I know the missing one. Queer duck by the name of Henry. Here's something else. A witness saw this car leave the other end of the alley in a hurry. That's a break the whole license number. Send out a general right away. Yes, sir. Looks like we chased the wrong car. Are we going in the bank? There's nothing in there but routine work. We want to get that gun and bandage back to the laboratory. No, no, I will not have it. You cannot use my place for a hideout for stolen goods. Sure we can, Frenchie. Now, wait till I tell you what we have. No, no, the police suspect me now. They may search my place at any time. Wait here, Henry, while I see if everything is clear. Somebody might come, and I'd have to run for it. You're not going to run anywhere. Not with all that dough. That'll be Wilkinson. It better be. Everything straight? Somebody ought to be out there with Henry. It's a lot of dough. A lot of dough? Money? Yeah, you know, the stuff they used to keep in the vaults down at the United Mortgage. Oh, in that case, I think it could be arranged. No, oh, no, you're cold on it now, Frenchie. We'll find another hideout. No, 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 I did not know it was so important. Important? It's the biggest haul ever made in this town. Oh, well, come, I think we are wasting valuable time. The night air, she is so bad for perishable goods. Come, there's a garage in the back where I keep my wines. Let's see the garage. Uh, 
this gun of the same caliber as the one used by Deboney. We'll soon find out if this is it. This garage hideout isn't so hot that it'll have to do. And you stay away from those wine barrels. Okay, okay. But you left Henry in there with him, didn't you? So what? These bullets definitely match. They're fired from the gun that killed your brother. And Deboney was on that job tonight. Oh, uh, how about taking in your film for the five star? Good idea. We all know that some of the gang have had their faces altered by plastic surgery. From the looks of this bandage, wouldn't you say it had been on a man's head and face? Mm, it probably was, yes. And it could have been used by a man recovering from a job of plastic surgery. You mean Taboni has had his face altered? It's very possible. And not a bad idea. But of course, it makes it tougher for you. Yeah. You better ditch the car, just in case. What about Henry? Bring him in here for a while. That is all, Mr. Grubb. Thank you. Yes, sir. place in that garage. What is the matter with it? It is solid concrete and securely locked. To me, it sticks out like a sore thumb. That's the first place I'd search. Perhaps I have a better hiding place. Now that we are partners, I will show you. Come. See? How firm, how sound. All right, so what? Observe. time ago, a bootlegger owned this place. He received his goods this way. That down there is the river. Well, it's a small spot, but not for our stuff. Sure, it's too wet. Besides, it might drift away. You could tie the bags so and lower them by ropes. Well, it won't do for the money, but let's see that key. Plain ordinary key. Yes, but what she unlocked is not ordinary, yes? I wonder if Wilkinson's back with Henry yet. Oh, yeah. We got him to worry about now. Silent, clean, efficient. Yeah. But we must lock in. It is not safe. I've changed my mind. We're going to use it after all. You give me my key. I do not know what you intend to do, but I will not have it. I cannot afford this trouble with the police. They will close me up. If your gadget's all it should be, they'll never know. Please, no, you cannot do this. Why do you do it to me? Maybe to keep you from talking about that dough, Frenchie. There's Henry now. Henry wanted to warm his feet. Oh, sure. Give him anything he wants. Come on, Frenchie, you join the party, too. Another thing. Get that, will you, Bill? Police lab. This is Bannister talking. Okay, we'll be right over. Come on, Tim. They want us back to the bank for a checkup. I better get back to my dear old paper. I'll show you to your room. Let me have another one. I'm cold. All right. Yo, 
you're not heading for the bank. I know it. That call came from the Harbor Division. They found the car we want dumped in the river. Yeah? What does the waterfront suggest to you, Tim? Frenchies. Right. That's enough. Just one more. All right. We'll take the bottle with us. Come on. Come on, we'll go upstairs. This way. Holy, do not step on that landing! Why, you... Escape, most likely. Fire escape. I'll be there when I come down. You think it's safe to leave that door in Frenchy's garage? No, he's liable to tip off the cops and square himself. Well, grab it for yourself. the first chance I get. Today I will get nails in a stick and fix that hole forever. It's dangerous the way it is. Are you kidding? But no, mademoiselle. What you build it for? I didn't build it. A long time ago, a bootlegger owned this place. He used that hole to hide his liquor. Well, that's as good a story as any. What about the others? They left by the fire escape. Tim's after them. Well, let's get out of here. Do them any good. You better not talk, fellow. The money they stole is. Frenchie knows where. All right, Frenchie, where's the money? 
I really do not know, my friend. You want to talk here? Go to headquarters. Well, you did not let me finish. I myself, I do not know. I only know they say something about a garage in back from my place. We'll let it go at that for the time being. For the very first time, I think Frenchy Ludoc is a big fool. I have made enemies of the League of Murdered Men. The police, they suspect me. Bannister's dead. Dead? That's not better. I had other plans for him. How about the watchman? Oh, he ain't never going to tell nothing no more, boss. I mean, Professor. And the money's hidden where we can pick it up any time we want it. It won't take many more such raids to convince the voters they need a new city government. except for three things. Bannister is not dead. The watchman did talk, and the police have already recovered the money you hid last night. There must be some mistake, Professor. There were several mistakes, and you men made all of them. We strike quickly to regain our lost ground. Hmm. This seems adequate. Syndicated Steel Corporation's payroll. You'd better pick up McKay as we arranged some time ago, Mr. Bernard. Right. Then come back for these three. I'll explain to them while you're gone. Is it all right for me to go now? Not yet, Mr. Gordon. Bannister's becoming too efficient. I think we'd better get rid of him. That's what we've been trying to do. I'm not interested in attempts, Mr. Taboni. This time, I shall get results. Watch the vase on that table. There are four more shells inside. Now, Mr. Grubb, this is what I want you to do. Take this camera. You follow these instructions closely. I want you to take this camera down to... Get me the mayor's office. Chief O'Brien speaking. Is the mayor in? Hello, Mayor Hanson. You read the papers? What do you think of your gangbusters now? That's so remarkable. Why did they let them steal the money in the first place? The gang is as far as ever from being broken up. Bannister, that's all I ever hear. If I had followed my judgment, I'd ordered Bannister off the job. You do, and you can have my resignation at the same time. Give me a police lab. Is Bannister there? What did you dig up on that mob car that was wrecked? What do you mean, nothing much? Well, no real clues. Just a scrap of greasy paper we picked up inside one of the doors. Don't expect much from it. Well, he is. Well, I'll resign from the case if you want me to. OK, Chief. Ready now, Bill. If 
there was ever anything on that piece of paper, it's certainly gone now. Well, if there ever was anything on that paper, young lady, infrared rays will bring it out again. Lab, journal calling Miss Logan. Uh, yes. City desk calling you, Miss Logan. Hello, Logan speaking. A new picture of Bannister. What for? You've got a hundred of them down there. What makes your voice sound so funny? Oh, well, you better take something for it. Okay. That's a sales slip from a drive-in stand, isn't it? Yeah, nothing much to work on, but we'll take a whirl at it anyway. Hold it, Bill. The boss wants a nice big close-up of you detecting something. Oh, not now, Vicky. I got a job to do. Swell. Well, I'll tag along and get one in action. Keep the change. Thank you. Won't be interested when we lift the company payroll. Get into your work clothes, McCain. Let's get this truck out of here. We're not eating. We're from police headquarters. Don't policemen eat? Not often when they're on duty. Oh. You worked here long, miss? About a year. Why? Remember serving any of these men? Well, this fellow was in here not ten minutes ago. Sola Bernard. Which way to go? Down the highway. You're the police, aren't you? Yes, why? I just found a dead man down the road. Didn't run? No, this man had been shot. Hold it, everyone! Get in, Vicky, if you're coming with us. Nothing harm to identify him. Turn this way and hold it. Don't do it, Vicky. I'll smash your camera. I don't want any pictures of this for reasons of my own. P-A-R-O. Mean anything to you, Tim? Not a thing. P-A-R-O. The cuffs of his pants are filled with steel filings, and the sole of his right shoe is worn like a truck driver's. That doesn't help much. Tracks show two cars pulled in here. Looks like a light car forced a heavy truck off the highway. Yeah, but where are they now? Did you pass a truck a few miles up the highway? Yeah, three or four of them. Gravel truck. Syndicated steel delivery. Syndicated steel, that sounds like it. This fellow must have been the driver. I bet the kid at the log cabin could tell you. We'll go back and find out. This is more than a truck theft. Stand by until you're relieved. Stop and investigate all syndicated steel trucks northeast of city. Driver murdered, car is stolen. Repeat, investigate all syndicated steel trucks northeast of city. That's all. Sure, I knew him. He was a tall, good-looking fellow. He tried to date me up for tonight because it was payday at the mills. Payday? That's what he must have been trying to write, that they were after the payroll. He wouldn't be having the payroll in the truck, would he? No, oh, they hang on him at car service. Wait till they phone headquarters.
Here it comes. Now do your stuff. Payroll's on his way to the steel mill by armored car. I tried to stop it at Hilldale, but it had already gone through. I don't see how anybody can hold up an armored car. I don't either. We'll follow it and find out. Come out of there with your hands up. Wait a minute, fellas. This ain't a stick up. I think my steer knuckle broke. Oh, hello, Burns. Hi, McKay. I didn't know you were back driving for syndicated. I'm just filling in for one of the boys that's pretty sick. Oh. It's okay, Slim. I know him. All right, you two. Drop them good. Get in and drive the pay car. McKay, you take the truck. Load these guards in the back. Come on, move! between here and the steel mills? No, I didn't. That's funny. We knew we were behind it. Any crossroads up ahead? None that I know of this side of the steel mill. OK, thanks. Seems funny that a truck and an armored car could just disappear. Well, there's a lot of places they could turn off here in the brush. Yeah, but how could a truck make an armored car do it? Better pull up, Tim. Been a collision not long ago. How can you tell? Otherwise, this would be flattened. Looks like the tracks aren't clear over to that fence. Go ahead, Tim. Hold it, Tim. Phony here. Tracks go right under that board fence. Oh, Bill, look this way. Bill! Bill, you all right? I guess so. Did you hear that? Sounded like a backfire up on the road. Sounded like a shot to me. So what have you got in that camera? I don't know. All I know is I snapped your picture and it went off like a gun. It is a gun, and you almost parted my hair with it. Is it yours? No, that's not my camera. Mine had my initials right here. Somebody switched cameras on you. Yeah, somebody. I guess I know a backfire when I hear one. And I know a gun when I hear it, too. I've been shot at it enough times. All right, all right. I'll go check on it if it'll make you feel better. Keep an eye on those guards. We'll put it back in the car and don't shoot any more pictures. That armored truck must have driven through here. Yeah, no doubt of it. Let's take a look. It's a great spot to hide an armored car. You said it.
Cactus safe. Yeah. Let's move in and take him. Cars now heading west on Highway 18. an army tank. All right, it's slowed down, too. He can take us all day like this. Yeah, and radio for help, which he's probably doing. Mac, when you come to the next curve, turn around and head back, fast. cars get here, let them take care of you. Oh, Tim. Yeah? Don't tell anyone we've recovered the money. Vicki knows. She won't when I get through. Send her back to town one of the other cars. What are you up to? A lot of things. I'm afraid this is just a waste of time. Why? Well, any crook smart enough to rig up a thing like that is too smart to leave any fingerprints on it. Well, there's plenty of smudges. I'll see how they come out. Bill! Hey, put that thing the other way. No, this is mine. Some cop found it in a telephone booth downstairs. Downstairs? That's funny. Yes, very. Vicki, someone we trust around here is double-crossing us. You're right, Bannister, no prints. That's that. Maybe there's some on the camera. Oh, it wouldn't mean a thing. Everyone's handled it. Police lab. Richard speaking. Chief wants to see you in the office right away. I've been expecting that. Oh, Bill. Have you found out yet how the gang got away with the money? Not yet. Hiya, Chief. That plan of yours has gotten us into a fine mess. When I told the mayor the payroll had been grabbed, he went through the roof. He did? Good. Good nothing. He gave me my choice of firing you or resigning. So I resigned. Not on my account. Why don't you let me tell Hanson that I have the money in my wall safe? 
Because I don't want anyone to know that but us, not even the mayor. But your job. It's not as important as busting this gang. But you're off the force. I know. But there's nothing to prevent a private citizen from trying to run this gang down, is there? No. There's nothing to keep the police from helping, if we feel like it. Of course. Now, we know that someone we trust is tipping off the gang to our plans. Seems so. At least they always know them in advance. That's right. Now, you carry out your part in our plan. And I'll put the finger on the spy Professor Morris has put here at headquarters. Hey, Bill. How'd this story get in the paper? Didn't we get the money from the pay car? Sure, it's in the chief's wall safe. Then what's the idea? Look, Tim, we know Professor Morris has got a spy among us. Well, it looks like it. He always knows what we're going to do before we do it. We're going to use that money to catch the spy. I don't get it. We're going to tell everyone I've got it. But we're going to tell each and every one it's hidden in a different place. Oh, I see. Then when the gang comes to get the doll, we know who tipped them off. That's it. Let's go. It's a dirty shame, Bill. You're making a big mistake. You were doing all right. I got a mind to quit, too. I'm resigning. Forget it. O'Brien needs you. That's a fine thing, firing you. Just when you're all set for the big blow-off. What do you mean, blow-off? Talk, Bill. I'll talk, but not now. How about a cup of java, Vicky? Sure. I've had a direct tip that the gang didn't get the money. I don't understand. You've got nothing on me there. But if the gang didn't and we didn't, then who did? Doesn't that put it up the banister? I've heard rumors that Bannister and Frenchie the Duck are pretty close. The money's in my apartment. I was going to use it to trap the gang, but mum's the word. Let them worry about it for a while. If you won't tell a soul, I got the money in my cellar. Now listen, keep it under your hat. But the money from the armored car has been located at... According to the papers, we have the payroll money. According to you, gentlemen, the police have recovered it. Now what did happen? And what could happen while Wilkinson and I were chasing people through the brush who weren't there? You mean you think Tavoni and I grabbed the money? Gentlemen, please. I'm sure Mr. Bernard wouldn't do such a thing. Besides, he had no opportunity. There's another possibility you gentlemen have overlooked. Mr. Bannister has been discharged from the police service. Perhaps he anticipated that he would be and neglected to turn in the money. Answer, Mr. Gordon, and thank you. Yes, sir. The money has been located. We shall pick it up this evening. Who is it? Yeah. All set. I stacked our men at every place we said the money was hidden. Good. Now, whichever place the gang raids, we'll know just who gave them that particular address. My men will call me here as soon as anything starts. I better call the chief. Hello? That's funny. I can't get the chief's office. Hey, Chief, something's gone wrong. What do you mean, gone wrong? Well, Bill just had me on the phone and said he'd tell you to get that money out of your wall, Chief, and into the vault downstairs, quick. What money? Well, search me. He said you'd know. Why didn't he phone me? He said he was trying to, but your line was dead. He seemed awfully excited. Get that bag out of the closet. two officers on guard in the hall. Hey, you two. The chief wants you. Take that down and store it in the big safe. We'll take it, but not in the big safe. Keep your hands up. How did you get those uniforms? Ask the two cops when you get them out of the cleaning closet. I don't see why I can't get the chief. He said he'd be. Hello? He did. I'm sorry they didn't go into Frenchie's so I could fit it on the mare. Bye. A carload of men just passed your place three times. Now they're unloading at your corner. My place? I told Haskins the money was there. That makes him the gang spy. It looks like it. Better get going. Take the men from downstairs. I'll see if I can get the chief again. All right.
Hello? Hello? you get here? Well, oh, you know Vicky. Always where she's not expected and least wanted. What do you mean, not wanted? Well, what happened? What about Tim? I don't know. All I know is your stakeout, Mr. Fryer. Oh, no, I didn't. At least we know who's carrying information to Mortis. Who? Prepare yourself for a shock, Vicky. Your little helpmate, Mr. Haskins. Haskins? <laughs> that bump on the head didn't do you any good. I hope you're right, but nevertheless, we'll get him in the chief's office tomorrow morning and find out for sure. But listen, Haskins, the money's gone. And it was you who called the phony policeman in from the hall. Well, you told me to. Don't forget, you told the chief I called you on the phone when I didn't. Well, I thought it was you. It sounded like your voice. Honest. Let's be fair about this, Bill. That could happen. Well, how come the gang showed up at the place we told Haskins the money was cashed? Well, they showed up at your place, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, Haskins, I guess you're just a victim of circumstances. I'm glad of it. You mean all is forgiven? All is forgiven. Gee, thanks, pal. Well, I guess I better go get a short uh, coffee or something. I'll see you later. Now, well, is anybody convinced? Sorry, but I'm not. Me neither. His alibis are too pat. I hate to doubt a boy like Haskins, and I think I ought to put a tail on him. Well, since I'm not on the force anymore, it wouldn't cost anything to let me do it. Good. Then it wouldn't have to go on the record in case we're wrong. I thought we'd agreed you were never to come here except when sent for. I had to. I'm in a jam. Look, I want to talk to you alone. Anything you have to say can be said in front of these men. Okay. We've got enough money stacked up so that we can split it, scatter, and live like kings. I believe so. 
But stacking up money is not my real purpose. I know all about that, but the cops are wise to me. They know that I've been tipping you off to their moves. And you're afraid. Well, why not? This guy Bannister's no dumbbell. And he's gonna get us sooner or later, too, Doc. He might. But I intend to get him and the entire police department first. Hey, that's a big order, ain't it? My plans are all made. I warned them what to expect on my last broadcast. They ignored the warning, so they have no one to blame but themselves. These are detailed instructions for a man by the name of Soupy Collins. Do you know him? No. Soupy. Safe cracker, huh? A real Peterman? The best on his line. Get this to him at once through our Mr. Crump. I don't like carrying dope like this. Suppose the cops find it on me. They won't understand. It reads harmless. But Collins will understand. Okay. But I think it'd be smarter to scram. Hey, what did you mean you ain't interested in dope? What other reasons is there for a mob, then? Revenge and power. I don't know, Tim, but when a bomb expert like Soupy Collins buys an alarm clock, something's going to happen. And I'm going to camp right here until he makes his next move. Bring a squad car around to 4th and Oak and stand by so we can trade him when he comes out wherever he goes. Okay. Makes a tick. You tell him. I'll hook it up while you guys load the stuff. Soupy drove the truck into the yard behind the old warehouse. I've got to get in there and see what's going on. Let's go. No, you stand right down at the corner. If Soupy comes out again trailing. If I hear any trouble, I'll trail you. Right.
long do you figure it'll take you to reach police headquarters, Soupy? Twenty minutes. I'm allowing ten more for safety. That's cutting it pretty close. I know what I'm doing. Anyway, I'll be on the truck. Yeah, well, I'm glad I won't. Stops at the police garage, give them this pass. By the time they find out it's phony, it'll be too late. Let's get going. I can hear that clock ticking from here. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. Open the gate for me. Hold it. Get that truck started. and blow the place up. That'll kill everybody in the building. Catch it and dump it in the river. Yeah, if there's time. Dump this load. We better leave, buddy. We ain't got more than a couple of minutes. Keep driving. Let's get out of here. There ain't but a few seconds left. There's the bridge just ahead. some trouble, boss. It, it didn't work. What went wrong, Mr. Elliott? <laughs> I wish I knew. Somehow Bannister got wise. Yeah. I wonder who spilled it. Do you recollect that the last time Mr. Hoskins was in here, he said he thought the police suspected him? That's it. The police spotted Collins through him. Undoubtedly. I'm afraid we'll have to send Mr. Hoskins away. You mean blast him? Not necessarily. We must not be allowed to come here anymore. One, Mr. Grubb, with this. Yes? Bannister is here to see you. Good. Send him in. Congratulations, Bill. Thanks, Chief. That was a great piece of work, Bannister. Well, it's a start anyway. These are the kind of headlines we like to read. I suppose you're giving Bannister his badge and reinstating him? Got it right here for him. No, thanks, Chief. You're not quitting now just when we got this gang on the run? No, I'm not quitting. But I don't want the badge just yet. I certainly don't well, see what... I've accomplished what... more since I've been off the force than I did when I was on it. So let's let it ride like that. All right, but it doesn't look good. How did you do it, Bill? By trailing Haskins. And your plan worked? Fortunately. You see, Haskins was carrying information from here direct to Professor Mortis. Then he should be arrested at once. That would be another mistake. I don't understand. We'll skip that. The Chief does understand. 
I used Haskins once, and I intend to use him again. Yes, that's all right. What's your plan, Bill? Well, the reporters will be here for more news if they're not already here. Now, this is what we'll do. What's up? Another Randall Allen story, I guess. For all I know, I got a tip from my office to be here. Do you think it's true Bannister's back on the force? What's the new angle? Have you caught Mortis? What about Bannister? What I have for you is more important than news. Are you kidding? But first of all, I've got to ask you to keep a secret. A secret? No news? What good's a secret? I know that's asking a lot of reporters, but I have to take that chance. Well, how about it? Will you do it? How long do we have to keep this secret? Not long. I promise to give you every break as soon as I crack this case. Okay. We'll play ball. Let's have it. All right, here it is. In a notebook among the effects of Soupy Collins, we found mention of a newsboy named Grubb. We believe that Grubb is the go-between for the League of Murdered Men. We want to get a hold of Grubb before the League gets wise and has a chance to silence him like they did Corky Watts. That's why we want it kept quiet. What is it you want us to do? Help me locate Grubb. With your connections, you can do it quicker than we can. As soon as you find out anything, report to me. That's all. Goodbye. Thank you. You got any hunches about this grub? Nope. Say, I think I'll check with the circulation department. Town, Al? Sure, I've been. All right, back here. Only going a few blocks. Okay. Thanks, Al. This is as far as I go. Hasn't left his station once. We ought to get some action pretty soon. Extra afternoon edition, racing results. Extra. I didn't see anybody slipping that note. Must have got it from that bundle of papers. Smart trick.
do you suppose Grubb ran into the subway? We can't figure it out. He wouldn't commit suicide just because he was being followed. Whatever it was, it didn't work out so good for him. But for that matter, for us. Maybe he got excited and forgot about that train when I took a shot at that lock. He's one man that Mortis won't bring back to life anyway. Yeah? Randall wants you in the lab right away. Sounds important. I can't get much from this, Bill. There are no fingerprints, and it's written with an ordinary pencil. And what about the paper? Well, it's just from one of our scratch pads here at headquarters. Then Haskins wrote it here and got it to Grubb by that delivery truck. Grubb would have taken us to Mortis, but the train stopped him. Where's Haskins now? He was in the press room upstairs. He's our one real lead to the gang. If we could stampede him, he might lead us right to them. Get him in the chief's outer office in about five minutes. I'll see that no one else is there. And then what? Show him how to listen in on the chief's dictaphone. I'll show you a little news gathering trick. I found out the chief's a little absent minded about closing the key at his end. Well, you're taking a chance. What have they got to lose? The radio cars are all set with plain clothesmen in them. Whichever way Haskins goes, he'll be trailed. on Grub panned out. Then you were right. Yeah, if nothing goes wrong, the drag death will locate the Mortis headquarters inside of an hour. Say, I've got to get busy. I'll say we have. No, 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 you, you cover things here. Uh-uh, I'm going with you. He's on his way. Oh, I uh, need something in here. Are you connected with the broadcaster? Direct. Sorry, Vicky. Janet Joe left you out tonight. Attention all special cars. Haskins has just left. When you pick him up, report. R66 has just picked him up, heading south on Market. 61 and 64 are paralleling on Broadway and Highland. Tell car 66 not to get too close. Car 66, don't let suspects see you. Stay back. Other cars will cover. Have car 64 move in now. Car 64, contact suspect car at Broadway and 8th. Car 66. As soon as 64 has made contact, you turn off. Vicky! What in the name of... What happened? Don't ask me questions, just get me out of here. Haskins has ditched his car. He's gone into the bus terminal. Instead of heading for Mortis, he's running away. Tell one of the boys in car 64 to check all ticket windows quick. I was dumb, Tim. I let him get away. Don't worry. The whole force is watching him. Get down to the radio room and listen in. A man of his description just bought a ticket for Glen Falls. The bus for there has just left. Tim and I'll go after it. We'll take Highway 12. Wire ahead and have the police at Glen Falls pick him up on arrival. We can't afford to let him get away, Bill. Don't worry, Chief. We won't. Hey, Bill, I Come just found... We're going for a long ride. We ought to make it to Glen Falls about the same time that bus does. Yeah, it looks like a highway patrolman flagging us down. Are you Bannister? Yeah. I just got a flash from your chief. He says Haskins left the bus at Truxton and boarded a westbound train. How far is that from here? 40 miles. Train left there 20 minutes ago. Anywhere we can head it off? They can take Highway 19 North. You might catch it at Emory. That's 70 miles. We'll try. Phone Chief O'Brien. Tell him to wire the conductor to delay the train if he can. Okay. We're off 
officer. Hello, I have a message for you. Haskins left the train at East Junction. Where's that? Next, turn to your left and east 10 miles. Thanks. I'd say he's 30 years old, about my bill, his black hair and blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, he got off here. I noticed him because he was kind of nervous-like. Where'd he go? Down the track. Hopped the northbound freight just as he pulled away from the water tank. How long ago was that? Mm, uh, nine minutes and 30 seconds. Thanks very much. Slide I away, recollect Tim. exactly what time it was, because I said to the young guy, Resisting arrest doesn't make you look very innocent. You can't arrest me, Bannister. They threw you off the force. You're not a cop. That's right, but Tim is. Here he comes now. Nice work, Phil. Come on, Haskins. Your troubles are just beginning. Is this story true? Bannister captures member of League of Murdered Men? Certainly it's true. I gave out the news myself. I don't see why you ever threw him off the force. He's the only man you had that ever got anything done. Well, you told me to, Your Honor. It was an order. Put him back on again. And that's another order. Bannister again, eh? All right, Mr. Bannister. We'll have Haskins out before the day's over. Hey, Professor. Are you going to have him make out he commit suicide with them little white pills like I did? Certainly. And claim the body for burial and bring him back to life. Who can you send to make arrangements? Cops have seen all us guys since we had our pans altered. Take this to J.B. Malloy. He's an attorney who will act for us. Is he a friend of yours? Hardly. Tell him to memorize the instructions, then destroy them. What makes you think he'll do it? I'm counting on you and Mr. Taboni to persuade him. and ask me to arrange this interview, Haskins. Persuade you to help us in rounding up the League of Murdered Men. What do you say? Not a chance. Why not? I'll use my influence as mayor to get you as light a sentence as possible. We don't make that sort of a bargain with criminals, Your Honor. I don't want it anyway. The League wouldn't rat on me, and I won't rat on them. Do you mean to tell me you're more afraid of the League than the law? Sure I am. 
You can't send me up for more than a few years. And the league plays for keeps. Take him away. They just found this in Grubby's clothes, sewed in a coat lapel. Make anything of it, Bill? No. No, it's in it? No, they just found it. How about me taking it to the lab for analysis? Go ahead. Mind if they strip Haskins to the skin to see if he's got a duplicate? What makes you think he has one of them? He's psychic, Your Honor. Sorry, gentlemen, but I can hardly afford to become embroiled in anything as questionable as this. You can't afford not to, brother. Memorize what's on that paper, then burn it. And follow the instructions. I don't like to refuse, gentlemen. You ain't gonna. We're not asking you, we're telling you. Chief O'Brien for me at police headquarters. Yes, sir. Uh, that capsule contained a combination of the strongest soporifics known to medicine. Soporifics? You mean a sleeping powder? One that induces a sleep so deep that might easily be taken for death. Could a patient be revived from such a sleep? Hmm, I think so, if given an antidote within a reasonable time. Why? Randall? I believe you've solved the riddle of those prison suicides that later turned up alive. You mean that's a league of murdered men? I don't get it. Well, they could have faked suicide by taking one of these capsules and then could have been brought out of their sleep by the friends who claimed their bodies for burial. Bill, I think you've hit it. We searched Haskins and found this in the flap of one of his pockets. So made to the one we found on Grubb. Fill it with something harmless and put it back in his coat where you found it. What for? Because we don't want him to know we found it and we don't want any more suicides. Ernie Malloy just phoned and said two men tried to hire him to visit Haskins and tell him to commit suicide at 5 o'clock. Then be on hand to claim the body. So his friends could bring him back to life as they did to Boney. I suppose so. I was pretty sure they'd try that. More mind reading, I suppose. Sure. Phone Malloy, will you, Chief? And tell him to pretend to do what they ask. What, and let them take Haskins away in a dead wagon? Sure, and then trail him right to their headquarters. I get it. Is everybody crazy? Maybe I am, but I think I know who Professor Mortis is. Who? I'll tell you after I search the records on Clayton Maxton. Who's Clayton Maxton? Sounds like an automobile horn, but that can't be right. Will somebody please tell me what this is all about? Let me J.B. Malloy and fast. Well, I judge you convinced Mr. Malloy he should assist us. Sure. We'll pick up Haskins' body at five sharp. You know what worries me is, can we trust this guy, Malloy? Certainly not. For now, he's probably tipped off the police. Tipped off the police? I hope so. We've got to make them believe they're outwitting us. Otherwise, they'll never let us have Haskins' body. Yeah, but they'll trail it to our headquarters. They'll trail the body, yes. But not to our headquarters. Now, this is what I want each one of you to do. I was right. Professor Mortis is really Dr. Clayton Maxton, one of the greatest scientists in the country. Of course. I remember him now. Unbalanced on the subject of suspended animation. Right. He killed a man experimenting with it. He called him an experiment. The law called it murder. And sent him to the chair. With the help of his lab assistant, he got one of those capsules and apparently committed suicide. He was taken away by this same assistant and brought back to life. Do you know who the assistant was? Haskins. Would you mind turning around while I phone some misinformation to the papers? over. I've got a mighty creepy feeling inside. Oh, forget it. Nothing can go wrong. Says you, knowing you don't believe it. We won't arouse suspicion following in a taxi. And there'll be a squad car trailing with us one block over. Driver, follow that car.
Nolan calling car 18. Proceed west about 20 miles an hour. I'd get an awful guilty feeling about letting Bannister tackle this harebrained scheme. You ought to have, after getting me to fire him off the force. Well, I told you to reinstate him afterward, didn't I? But he wouldn't come back. Neither would I in his place. Charm. By the time they find out they're following the wrong car, Happy will be in the clear. You better trail along, just in case. What's that for? Just an added precaution. Bill's got a portable set with him. I still don't get it. Well, in case we lose the wagon, we pick up his beam and follow him that way. You know, like an airplane coming in on the fog. Oh. There it is. That's funny. The beam doesn't seem to come from the car ahead. Back here and over to one side. This thing is all wrong. A beam isn't coming from the car ahead. Maybe Bill isn't in it. It's got to be. We haven't lost sight of him for a minute. Yes, but radios don't lie either. Yeah. Nolan calling car 18. Pull up and hold everything till you hear from me again. Hey, driver, get that car and run it over to the curb. Let's beat it. We're wasting our time. Wait a minute. Something's gone wrong. Switch wagons on us somehow. Bill's in the other one. Come on. Turn around, head back. Nolan calling car 18. Something's gone haywire. Double back. I'll keep you advised and step on it. Driver, turn north the next corner. <laughs> Nolan calling car 18. Turn north on Grand and continue to further advise. The bony and I can handle it. Take this wagon up the road and ditch it. Car 18, stay on grand, we're on the beam again. Right here, please. The electrodes, Mr. Hollyta.
Bannister. Well, Professor, I've been looking forward to this meeting for a long time. Hold everything, copper. Your coming here enables me to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, Mr. Bannister. I'm going to put you to sleep. A sleep that can't be told from death. And then I'm going to bring you back to life again. and killing me if you're going to bring me back to life. To remain alive, you must repeat the treatment every few days. And to get the treatment, you must obey my orders. The police are headed this way. We ran one car into the ditch, but there's more coming. Calm yourselves. They'll never look for him here. That's what you think. Oh, I see. Let him up. Professor. Hmm. Radio beam sending, sir. So you've kept them informed, eh, Ballister? It's a little late for that, isn't it, Professor? Very clever. Nevertheless, you won't get away. Take them to headquarters in your car. I'll go by a different route. Nolan, calling car 1-8. The jolt we got put this radio out of commission. Look, Tim, the car we were chasing. Driver, turn around and follow that car. Cut out the shooting. Have the rest of the cops down on us like a swarm of bees. I'll lose them as soon as we hit town. You'll have to do better than this or we won't lose them. Shut up. took you so long. We lost a lot of time going up and down side streets trying to lose the police taxi. Where are Halligan and Bernard? Shaking off the cops. Good. If you'll prepare yourself, I think we can proceed with our operation without interruption. Better take your coat off. I don't suppose I have much choice. If you're determined to use me as a guinea pig. This is not an experiment. First, I shall suspend all appearance of life in you. Then, for reasons I have already explained, I shall bring you back to a life you may not find too satisfactory.
I have quarters for a squad. There's a hundred places around here they could hide out. Looking for someone, copper? Come on, get in there. You too, sister. Enough time has elapsed for me to bring him back. The electrodes. The pull motor, please. I had hoped Helliger and Bernard would be here to welcome our new member to the League of Murdered Men. without hope of recovery. You shall see. Pull motor, please. Chief O'Brien speaking. No sign of Bannister yet, eh? What's that? Vicky Logan and Tim have disappeared, too. Well, then find them. You have to tear down every shack in that district. What kind of a police department have I got anyway? Pull the motor off. Remove the electrodes. See, it was not merely an experiment. The whole thing seems rather pointless to me. Not at all. You are now a full-fledged member of the League of Murdered Men. And I'm supposed to obey all your orders, I believe. Not only supposed to, Bannister. You have to. You've got a lot to learn about people, Professor. Perhaps. When you rest it up a bit, we have two more candidates for admittance to the League. How did you get here? Walk straight into a trap. And now that they know about this, of course they must join the League. You don't mean that. Why not? I don't mind dying and coming back to life, if that's all there is to it. That's not quite all there is to it. To remain alive, you must take one of my capsules every few days. And you can get them only from me. Is that on the level? If it wasn't, do you think we'd be taking orders from him like a lot of sheep? Shall we say, uh, ladies first? I've got a suggestion I think will appeal to you, Professor. Really? I've no doubt that you've gathered enough money to last you and your men for the rest of your lives. He's got enough stairs somewhere out in the back to last a dozen guys like us. Money is not my real objective. I know. It's revenge. Revenge against two men in particular. Yes. Police Chief O'Brien and Mayor Hanson. If I get rid of those two for you, will you let my friends loose? You would turn on men you've served so long? Why not? What do I owe them after the way they kicked me off the force? To get rid of them both, it might be worth disbanding and leaving the country. I think it's a swell idea. I'll settle for 5Gs and a prescription for them stay alive tablets. Bring me proof you've done it and I'll free your friends unharmed. Wait, Bill. You can't do a thing like that. Not to save my hide anyway. Police lab, Randall speaking. Have you analyzed that formula of mortis? If a fellow took it and was brought back to life, would he have to keep on taking an antidote to stay alive? You pretty sure of that? I see. Thanks.
O'Brien speaking. Who? Lannister? What happened to you? I'll tell you later. Will you get the mayor over to your office right away? It's a matter of life or death. And have some reporters there, too. I'll tell you when I see you. Bye. For the 40th time, I don't know what's on Bannister's mind. You'll have to wait till me. What's up, Bannister? Any more dope in the League of Murdered Men? What about that guy, Mortis? Now, hold everything. You'll know all about it after I've had a talk with the chief. What's this all about? Where are Tim and Vicky? Forget about them. I just came from Professor Mortis' hideout. Good. I'll send a couple of squads there. Where is it? I can't tell you. He just forced me to join his League of Murdered Men. What does that mean? Every member has to obey his orders. There's no escaping. Nonsense! Get to the point. The point is... He sent me here to kill you two. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes, isn't it? Get back! You'll find out what they want you to know when they want you to know it. I don't like this sort of fooling, Bannister. Neither do I. Put that gun away. I'm sorry, but there's no other way out. There's a story your papers can play up. Get over there. Bannister kills mayor and chief of police. Disgruntled detective lieutenant avengers discharge from post. You can't give out false news like that to papers. It's a misdemeanor. I didn't give out any such story. Did you? Not a word. Reporters are always jumping at conclusions. Maybe we ought to demand a retraction. Well, don't worry. You'll get it. And just wait till you see it. Whatever you do, don't correct that story for a couple of hours. Why not? It'll probably mean the lives of three people if you do. Vicki Logan, Bannister, and Tim Nolan. Looks like he did what he said he was going to do, doesn't it? Yes, but I've changed my mind about breaking up the League. You don't have to. Hold it where you are, all of you. Very foolish, Bannister. You don't dare shoot me. Why not? Have you forgotten about those capsules? No. Our chemist analyzed your formula and found out you lied about them. What do you mean? She just told you you needed them so you'd be afraid to run out on it, and you believed it. <laughs> Take it easy, Taboni. You're all under arrest. Why not? Face them all. Tim, see if the squad cars have arrived yet. Oh, that's all right. See, I'll carry the money for you, Professor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tavoni. No use, Professor. I want my share of that dough.
must have gone out that way. There's no one left to bring him back this time. Since I was the one who had O'Brien kick you off the force, I'm asking him to give you back your badge. Will you take it, Bill? Thank you, sir. Detective Captain should read gangbuster number one. Well, that's the way it goes. Demoted one day and promoted the next. You know, Bill, I wanted to make you chief, but I suddenly remembered that was me. <laughs> Hold it, gentlemen. 